question that came in via email from Pavel. We're going to take a look at collar structures and the potential for profits or maximizing profits on a structure that's not working out to what Pavel had really expected. So Pavel's direct question is, I have a question regarding collars. With selling an at-the-money call, usually sell an at-the-money call by a lower strike put for the collar. We'll talk about all that in just a moment. But when selling the at-the-money call, the probability of success of the stock going up above the short call strike price and being assigned for the max profit on the position is only about 50%. It gets lower the more out of the money we go. So if I sell a higher strike call, a stock, let's say, trading at 37.50, I sell the 38, I might have a 45% probability of the stock being above that for the maximum return. I sell a 39 might move down to 37% probability, and so forth. Pavel says, so although the max risk is kept low and the potential ROI is high enough, it is only realized 50% of the time or less. Pavel says, I trade weekly collars, but so far it's been a wash. How do we manage collars to maximize the realized profits to offset the lower probability of success? All right. So what is a collar? It is one of the more conservative option strategies. Looks like a spread position, doesn't it? Maybe a bull call debit spread if you're familiar with that or a bull put credit spread structure. But because we're buying shares of stock in this structure, we're buying an out of the money put, we're controlling the losses to single digits, maybe three, maybe four, maybe 5% max. We're also gonna sell that at or just slightly out of the money call Pavel mentioned to generate premium, which helps pay for the put. So we're still getting a positive premium in with a capped gain to the upside, just like a covered call, but a floor to the downside as a conservative position because we own the put. We buy shares of stock, we sell an at or out of the money call against it. Using those proceeds, we buy a lower out of the money put option to still take in a positive premium or positive credit, if you want to say it that way. An example of a weekly long collar from one of our default searches that came up today was on FCX Freeport McMurrin. The stock's trading at about 37.65. Now I might buy shares of Freeport at 37.65 and for a weekly series sell the 5th of November 38 call for 76 cents. At the same time, I'm gonna buy a lower strike put. In this example, it's the 36 strike put for only 33 cents. I'm taking the proceeds from that call, little less than half of it, or around half of it, a little less than half of it, to purchase the put. And what does that give me? That gives me a structure where I can still make a two, two and a half percent return to the upside if the stock goes in the direction that I want. If the stock moves above 38, we're assigned on the position, I'm still making about a 2% return on the position. Because I bought the 36 put and still received a little premium to lower the cost basis, my maximum risk is only 3.3% for seven days. Now, that 38 call, as Pavel mentioned, only has a 41.9% probability above, holding a delta of around 43 or 0.43 in this case. That's sort of the concern that he has. This is a preferred structure, I'll say, for a collar that I would use in my account, but it does come with this caveat that you have a lower percent return than you would a standard covered call. You have a lower probability of making the success, but you do have a very controlled single digit risk. All right. Oh, sorry, let me get that arrow out of there. All right. Now, let's take those numbers and look at a trade simulation. We're going to use the trade simulator tool at radioactivetrading.com. You go to that site and you click on the resources tab. And this allows us to put in some basic numbers to evaluate if a trade has an expectancy of profit. We're going to set our target return of 2.1% and our loss limit of 3.3%. That particular position on FCX we were just looking at only had a 42% probability, which means what? I'm only right 42% of the time. I'm going to be wrong 58% of the time. Now, I'd probably do $100,000 normally with this simulation because we have to buy the shares of stock. We're just going to give it at 10000 
And let's say I invest a third of that into each trade. What is this tool going to do? It's going to flip a coin. Heads, we win. We make 2.1%. Tails, we lose 3.3%. And then we see the win-loss ratio, winners and losers over here, and an end trading amount. And as we can see, with that structure, if I'm making the max return of 2.1% when I'm right, only losing 3.3% when I'm wrong, if I'm right only 42% of the time, this is where we're getting into that range that Pavel's talking about. Actually, this is a pretty significant loss. It's down about 30%. It's not winning at all. The wash area that he was in at one point, this account went down at the beginning and came back up, and it was about at break even. If you're not right more often than wrong, even in this limited risk structure, you're not going to profit. Now, what do we need? Now, we can almost see that from the numbers, can't we? If I'm making 2.1% when I'm right and losing the max loss of 3.3% when I'm wrong, we could just divide that out and we see we need about a 67% win rate, right? Well, let's take a look at that. Use the same numbers, but change our loss limit, probability of loss, to 34%. We're going to be right 66, 67% of the time. Same rough allocation. And here we see that over time, if I am right 67% of the time, that we can see about a 16% return over 100 trades. So if you're doing two trades per week, two weekly collars over the whole course of the year for 52 weeks, there's 100 trades with a win rate of 67%. And this win-loss ratio, you'd have a 16% return of the investment at the end of the year. Well, at one point, the high point, you have a 16% return. You have 11,600 after starting with 10,000. Over time, it's positive, but it's a 10% return over those 100 trades. Is that meaning your target goals, or do you have a larger goal in mind for this strategy in your portfolio? Most likely, you're hoping for about a 20 or 24%, maybe about 2% per month over the course of the year to get that sort of range that you want. This is still not cutting it. To get nearer to that 24% return, with this example structure we saw right from the search on the weekly long collar position, target win of 2.1%, target loss 3.3%, to get near that 24% return, you need a 73% win ratio in order to make a profit. And that's typical of what I might see with a standard covered call portfolio. What do I mean? Well, the covered call portfolio doesn't have that bottom floor that we get with a collar. I can still sell at in the money, maybe out of the money calls and expect to make a 2 3% return because I'm not taking away, let's call it 25 3% return because I'm not taking away from that premium by buying the put as I would in a collar. But I'm probably trying to use a stop loss of 7%. So if the stock falls 7%, I'm gonna liquidate the position. And so I'm hoping to be right 70, 75% of the time. But with that ratio, I still need to be right about 73, 74% of the time if I'm making 3% when I'm right and able to keep my losses to 7% when I'm wrong. We all know the fault of a stop order, which is why the collar spread is so attractive. Because even if I set a 7% stop, but overnight the stock falls 12, 15, or 20%, I get filled with the market can give me. I don't get out at 7%, I get out of that 12, 15, or 20% loss, which has just taken out six or seven of my previous winners instead of only two or three. And that's a slippery slope. Now, let me go into a little back history here. Originally, when I started trading, I was level one, just like many of you were when you first started. I was allowed to do covered calls. Eventually applied for level two, got it a couple years later, 2004, 2005. And I was now able to do covered calls, buy calls, and buy puts, which meant I could do collars. Couldn't do spreads yet, but I could do collars. So around 2006, I started trading the standard college structure that Pavel mentioned. But at that time, there weren't a lot of weeklies available, if any. So I was doing 30-day out positions, selling that at the money call, 30 days out in time, buying a lower strike put. And for about two and a half to three years, I was averaging 2.8% on the winners. My average loss was about 3.8% on the lower end of the collar. 
but those numbers are very similar. To get to that 20, 25% return to two and a half, well, really about 2% per month over a 12 month period, I still needed that 68% win ratio to hit that mark. Okay. And even though you're looking at positions that have a 50% probability, you need to be right 66, 67, 68% of the time with a normal collar structure, making 2% and risking three, maybe making 2.5% and risking four. You're not always going to have the maximum loss and the maximum gain, but you can see how the numbers play out over time. The starting probability on my trades was the same. I was selling right at the money, maybe slightly out with a 40 to 50% probability. I wouldn't have won and kept trading the collars if I didn't have that win ratio. How was I able to get a 68% win ratio on positions that only had a probability of 40 or 50%? Well, I had to look for more bullish stocks. I needed to look for stocks that were in an uptrend above the 20 day or above the 50 day moving average. I needed to look for a positive MACD, something that was trending up or just started to break out above the signal line and above the divergence line. Bollinger Bands looking for things that maybe have a breakout or that are breaking beyond their upper bands. And I always wanted to look for stocks that had a high earnings per share growth, 7%, 8% year over year. Collar positions with the highest implied volatility, implying the highest return or highest premium you can get for the call, although you're overpaying for the put a little bit too, might not always be the best trades. It has high AV for a reason. It can swing drastically one direction or the other, potentially in your favor or potentially away from it, where you're quickly realizing the full loss on the trade. And honestly, another way I was able to get the 68% win ratio was, was good market conditions during the time I was trading it. And I'll be honest, it was a little bit of luck. Found a stock criteria that was working well for me based on discussions Ernie and I had. And to this day, I still use collars with about 10% of my portfolio. You might be able to find this on Amazon, I'm not sure, but this was the Married Puts and Collar Spreads book that Ernie and I wrote back in uh, 2007, I believe, 2008, um, that came out there. So it was a little paperback book, and it went through some of the different collar structures and some of the approaches that we use for the collar positions. But that doesn't really answer Pavel's question, does it? He says, how do we manage collars to maximize the realized profits to offset the lower probability of success? I will tell you, Pavel, that the preferred structure that I've seen and that I like to use is exactly what you're doing. Selling that close to at the money call as possible with only a 50% probability. Sometimes it'll be slightly out of the money. Sometimes it might be slightly in the money, and that's okay, with that lower strike put. It does have the lower probability. Rather than a management, because you only have five days to trade these positions and these weekly callers you're doing, you don't want to overmanage it and micromanage it when you're just trying to fight for maybe a 1.7, 1.8% return. Do you get out when you have half of it, if 0.9%? Well, if you're still taking the losses to the downside of three, three and a half percent, that's not going to get you to winning unless you're right 86 or 87% of the time now. You're going to need a bigger win ratio if you start taking the gains early. Could you start taking the losses, less losses, closing early if your sentiment changes? Yes, but again, you're in such a short window of time frame with these weekly callers. I would say focus on the underlyings and the criteria first. You maybe want to look for more bullish stocks. Use some of those more trends, such as a positive MACD, stocks with a higher earnings per share growth, maybe just had a Bollinger Band breakout. You might also want to consider looking a little further out in time. Look two to three weeks out in time. You're not going to have double the return and you might have a higher at risk, but you have more time for management and more time for the stock. If there's a day, a Tuesday or Wednesday where the market suddenly pulls back, if I'm still eight days to expiration, 10 days to expiration, I might see a recovery rather than the remaining two days or three days I need by just selling week by week. It might give you more time for management and for the stock to achieve its goals of what you're looking to accomplish. Can we increase the probability? Other bullish income plays, we talk about in the money covered calls, out of the money cash secured puts or naked puts, and high probability bull put credit spreads can give us a higher probability, but with a lower return. And that's really for the, what I'm referring to the covered call and the cash secured naked put. 
What do I mean by that? If I just did a covered call on FCX, bought our stock around 37.67, and I sold the 36 call for maybe $2.97, $2.87. Well, I'm $2.67 in the money. So most of that 287 is intrinsic that I'm giving up, but I'm still potentially making a 20 cent profit, which might only be a 0.7 or 0.6% return. But where am I? I'm at a 74, 75% probability of getting assigned and earning that return in the next five days. Can you do that with a collar? Well, of course, but does it give you the risk rewards you want? Let's not go to 35. Let's just go a little bit in the money. For about a 60% probability, buy FCX at 37.65. Sell the 37 call with a 58.9% probability above, a little bit better. We buy the 35 put. Now we still get a $1.12 positive premium. And this puts us up in a collar where we can make 1.3% if the stock stays above 37.67 for seven days. But we're risking 4.2% if it falls below 35 in the next seven days. Is that positive expectancy or a recipe for disaster? It's not necessarily a recipe for disaster, but it's not giving us a positive expectancy either. Take that target return of 1.3%, loss limit of 4.2. Let's round it up from 58.9% probability to put it at 60 Pavel. So we have our probability of loss of 40%. What happens with 60 wins and 40 losses? Well, at one point we did, again, just hit that break even. But later on, after 100 trades of wins and losses, down about 26%, down about 7,300 on the portfolio. That's not going to cut it. Looking at these numbers, where do you think we're going to be? We're probably going to need to be around a 75% probability or higher. That's the nature, unfortunately, of the collar spreads to get the maximum premium on the call selling right at the money. That's what we want with this strategy. We want to be right at the money to get that time value on the ATM bell curve by a lower strike put. So we still have a positive premium, but we are accepting 40, 45, maybe a 52% win ratio. So we may have to do some extra management, but with only five days to go on a weekly spread, you could easily overmanage the position. Now, I know one frustrating thing that investors and power options users might find about the collar spreads and our collar searches because there are multiple ways to skin a collar. Why are there so damn many seven, eight different default collar searches on power options? And the reason is to serve the goals of investors. The standard collar structure is what you're going to see. It's a bullish expectation. It's not neutral to bullish necessarily. It is a little bit more bullish. I want the stock to move up and then stay where it is after it moves up. The initial values default search, standard collars is a standard collar structure we're talking about, telling the at or out of the money call, buying a lower strike put 30 days out. The weekly collar search is the same structure as above as we saw with FCX just in a shorter time frame. Now, the debit collars, I know, won't suit your needs. What's the debit collar? And this way, we shift both legs up. I'm buying an at-the-money put, 7, 14 days out in time, and selling one or two strikes above that further out of the money call, now with only a 25, 30% probability. Why would I do this? Well, you have a lower probability. You have a higher potential return, which is all intrinsic if the stock moves above that higher strike price, but you have a much lower risk now because you bought the position at the money right where the stock's trading. You paid more for it and it would be done at a debit. It's still this structure just has a slightly lower risk and a slightly higher profit with a much lower probability of the stock going up above that short call strike price. Can you calendar a caller? Absolutely. The two default searches for different months standard caller form is selling a near-term at or out of the money call and buying an out of the money put, but that's maybe three, four, or five months out in time. Create sort of a calendar spread parity view with single digit risk. I might be only risking 2%, I'm sorry, 3.2% here with a put out to March, but selling a December call, I might probably do November, but in this example, selling the 
December 43 call, I do pay a debit of a dollar in this position, but it gives me a low risk of 3.2% with a chance to make 2%. And we can do it with different months in the money collars. That's the other search. That means I'm buying an in the money put four or five months out in time and selling a call equal to the strike for a lower premium near term. What are the pros of these different months calendar collar forms? Your annualized cost per day on the put is lower. Yes, you pay more up front because you're buying more time, but the cost per day is lower buying it further out in time. The option that's five months out in time is not five times the cost of the same strike 30 days away. You can have multiple right cycles, just like a calendar spread or a poor man's covered call. I can sell a call against it month by month by month, week by week by week, if I wanted to stay in the position longer because I was more long-term bullish on the underlying stock. The cons of this is that you have to be expect to be in the stock for multiple months of right cycles. And you're unlikely to see a strong profit in that first cycle or the first two right cycles if we're just going one week or two weeks out in time because the higher cost of the put, that is true. The goal is to keep writing it over time, just like in a diagonal calendar spread. And of course, another con of the calendar collar is you may have two ways to lose in the structure if you're not careful about how you set it up and what you look for as well. Now there is another one there called, two other spreads there and the defaults called reverses. Are these the reversals? No, the reversal is the opposite of a conversion, which we're gonna look at next. We call these the reverse default searches, the reverse long collar, the reverse long collar different months. Because imagine when you were just at level two trading in the older days, back in 2005, 2006 for me, finally got level two so I could do covered calls, buy a call, and buy a put. I can't do bear call credit spreads. The only bearish play I could do is buy a put. We know that can be tricky if we don't get as much of a movement as we want. We pay too much into implied volatility. So where does that put us? Well, I can create a bearish spread owning stock on level two. I take a standard collar and reverse the call in the put. I'm selling an at or slightly in the money call and I'm buying a higher strike put and in the money put with the same expiration. This gives me that bearish strategy that I can do at level two. It sounds odd buying stock to do a bearish position, but this is a structure again where I might be able to make one, one and a half, two percent if the stock falls as I'm expecting, while only risking two, two and a half percent to the upside. Here, this example wasn't the best one. I stuck with FCX. And so that November 19th, 21 day out, one gives me only a 1% return to the downside or 1.6% maximum risk if it moves above 39 against my expectations. But it was a development that allowed us to do bearish positions, even with only level two, without being able to do spreads and the fear of just trying to buy a put, but not seeing as much movement as you wanted. A decent way for down markets. The conversion is a collar. It's a collar structure, buy stock, sell call, sell put, same strike price, same expiration. It gives you a straight line profit and loss chart. So I might have bought report here at 37.60, 37.76, sold the 38 call and bought the 38 put. What happens if the stock's below 38? I exercise a 38 put, sell the stock at 38. I make a $4 profit, four cents. What happens if the stock's above 38? The put expires. I get a sign on my call. I make $4 because my cost basis was $37.96. It's a no risk trade with a guaranteed profit, but it's not often used by retail investors. And you can see why. We're not talking about $4 or $400 of profit here. We're talking about four cents or $4 total for a three leg transaction. You might find some better ones, but again, the conversion is not commonly used, but it is a form of a collar, and that's why it's there in the search. The reversal, a true reversal is the opposite of this. Instead of buying the stock, selling a call, buying a put, we do everything backwards. We short the stock. We sell the stock, short the stock, buy a call for protection to the upside, and sell a put like a covered put where you're short stock and sell the put. We're not going to get into that, but that's the true reversal. On the collars, we're talking about a reverse collar to show a bearish spread while being long stock, if that's all you're able to do. My direct thoughts to Pavel. 
How do we manage collars to maximize the realized profits to offset the lower probability? My suggestion is stay at the money as much as possible, right at the strike price, sometimes a little bit in the money, sometimes just a little bit out, 45 to 55% probability. Don't do one that's maybe too far out of the money, two strikes out, it's showing you a 35 or 30% probability. Try to stay right at the money with the structure that you want. Start analyzing your stock criteria. Make sure you're looking for strong fundamentals, good earnings per share growth, maybe a good P.E. ratio, which is hard to come by these days sometimes. Make sure you're looking at good technicals. You want a positive MACD. You want an uptrend. Make sure you're not choosing the one that just has the highest return. As we mentioned, because you are starting with that 50% probability, Pavel, you're not just neutral to bullish as I might be with an in-the-money covered call, an out-of-the-money cash secured put with a higher probability or a bull put credit spread. I need the stock to move up. I'm going to look for some other higher potential fundamentals and technicals that are showing more growth or point to a more bullish move. And I might not always think that the highest IV is the best trade because that might point to an event on the horizon that could cause fluctuations out on the stock. Take a look at some of your last trades, Pavel. And then if you can, on the power options tools, if you have access to the history, go back and look at those trades. What if you had sold them two to three weeks out in time instead? Were the losing ones that were only five or six days out in time, if you gave yourself that extra time, did it move more in your direction after a little blip or a sudden hiccup in the day where you're looking at near the full losses, but then only had two days or one day to get back to break even? Now maybe you have seven extra days or eight extra days. Does it work out better? I, I can't answer that. I didn't get a chance to do any testing today, but you might want to consider that. I don't necessarily think you should manage the collars to the upside. Meaning that if I open that position we looked at with a potential 2.1% return, should I close the collar on Wednesday if I've made 1.05% return? I'm not sure. I think I want to let it go longer to try to get more profit. But what you may want to consider is trying not to take the full loss on the collar in this very short time frame that you're in. If the sentiment changes, a trend reverses, the MACD reverses one or two days after in the trade or some news comes out or the market suddenly has a, has a decline, you can get out of the position a day or two early with only a two, two and a half percent loss instead of the three, three and a half percent loss. I might consider liquidating to avoid the full loss. What do you risk? That it does recover in the next day or the next two days and you're back to more of a profitable position instead of taking a loss. That's the chance you have to take. But as you saw, if you're looking at an average of a 2% return with these your weekly collars, perhaps, with risking 3 or 3.3%, you saw that you need to be right 68% of the time in order to profit long-term. That's just the structure of the trade. And if I was able to get that, and that's why I kept doing that, you will see full losses on the collar, but try maybe not to take the full loss. If you see a good warning sign ahead of time, get out a day or two early. Now on that, I mentioned that I was using collars extensively. I moved away from covered calls and naked puts in about 2005, end of 2005, beginning of 2006. And that portion of my portfolio is focused solely in collars now. And I did that for a couple of years. Why am I only using 10% of it now? Well, right when we released the collar book, we were also partnering with Kurt Frankenberg, the original author of The Blueprint and owner of Radioactive Trading. I began taking those collar funds and putting him into the married put positions. Now, as I mentioned, over time, a couple of years, the collars were averaging a 2.8% on the winners, 3.3% on the losers, and I needed that 68% win rate to stay successful. I think I was supposed to be 3.8% on the losses. I apologize. Over the years, after 79 married put trades, which take longer to get into, but we start in a structure where it's just the stock and the put, and to maximize the annualized cost of the put, it's five to six months out in time. I'm averaging 6.4% on the winners because we allow more upside growth to potentially happen. And yes, we will sell a call against them to create a collar as the stock moves up or other adjustments that's discussed in the full course, the blueprint. But 6.4% on the winners, 5% average on the losers, losers because of the controlled gain, excuse me. And it's a 59% win rate. That's what the track record shows. That's following all of my positions that we post in the Fusion portfolio. Ernest is much higher. I think he's a 10% average on his winner, maybe a 5.2% on his losers. And he's right, I think, 56, 57% of the time. But you see here, being right only 59% of the time, 
allowing for more upside growth instead of capping the gain in a standard collar after 79 trades or after 100 trades i'm seeing a much better return on investment even with a lower win ratio look at those numbers i could actually be wrong more often than i'm right that's not my goal <laughs> that's not my goal at all but i could be wrong more often than right and still make money with the average 6.4% on the winners and only losing 5% on the losers. But they are longer term, I'll admit that. My comment came in and says, yeah, but that's for four to five months. Right, I might be in a married put every four to five, I mean, in a single married put, excuse me, for four or five months and the put might be seven to eight months out in time. Following the rules in the blueprint, the full course there at radioactivetrading.com that discusses the proper structure and the 12 different income methods. This is why collars are only 10% of my portfolio because 50 to 60% of my portfolio is in the married put positions with maybe one standard collar or two standard collars in there as well with my other married put positions. So Pavel, as I mentioned, take a look. Take a look to what working for you for the stock criteria you were using and testing out other stock criteria. Analyze maybe going two to three weeks out in time. Rather than focus on limiting the winners by closing early if you have a gain, hoping that increases your win ratio so you don't go back to a 3% loss, I might focus on controlling those losers a little bit more. If you start to see signals that move against you, try to maybe, yes, your max loss is 3.5, 3.3%, but if you see the trend change or the market become weak, maybe exit that one early for only a 2% loss, a 2.5% loss. That might help your win ratio if you're still able to get. 1.7 to 2.2% on the winners to the upside. Those are my thoughts there um, for the collars, the different collars that are available. Increasing the probability probably won't give you the structure that you want to meet your goals, Pavel. We saw that. You might be taking on a higher risk because you're using a lower strike put option and selling it in the money call, you are getting more premium, but you might be at a three to one risk reward ratio, meaning you may need to be right 75, 77% of the time in order to profit long term.